Oh, that's a great way. <laughs> it's a great way to start an audio. <laughs> Hi there, folks. Welcome to The Legend of the Traveling Tardis. Thank you for joining us here at The Legend of the Traveling Tardis radio show. My name is Christian Basil. We're going to have an exciting day today. If you're just joining us live, folks, do not forget to chat into the video, uh, into our stream itself. All you have to do if you're on The Legend of the Traveling Tardis or The Hanging Wish Show or Krypton Radio, you can just simply chat as if you're chatting to us on Facebook and we'll show your uh, thing, uh, submit everything on screen. We are coming to you live here. If you're watching us on the Facebook page there. Also, we are on the YouTube channel. You can check us out at HWWS Media. And we're part of a whole bunch of people on that media channel there. You can catch us also on Spreaker, CBSRadio.com, Spotify. We're now on the NSC Live TV.com. No signals, comments. Of course, we're on iHeartRadio, also on Apple Podcasts, iTunes, whatever the heck they want to call themselves. And we're also on Krypton Radio Weekly every Saturday. Make sure you go to kryptonradio.com and check out the schedules. And I've got to say this to everybody even the folks at the conventions, we miss you people so much. <laughs> There we go, folks. My name is Christian Bazel. Let me introduce you to our panels. We have a great topic. It's a topic that I've been wanting to um, to go over since we saw the uh, YouTube video, Farewell, so Sarah Jane. I think it's about time that we've had this there. Starting to my left. Oh, there we go. I got it right. <laughs> oh, it's the wrong way. So There's a story of a guy named Jamesy. James Enstall from Greek to Me, uh, Geek to Me Radio. He's been on the show before over there, but for, uh, for the folks who may not be familiar with your work on the live channel, James, talk us a little bit about Geek to Me Radio. James Enstall. It's a uh, live pop culture-based radio show that airs in the St. Louis area, streams online, and then obviously once it airs, we cut the commercials out and upload it so everyone in the world can hear it in podcast form. We cover <laughs> the realms of TV, movies, games, and comics. Awesome. And joining us as well is the lovely director of their show and co-host, Melanie Dean. Artiste Melanie Dean, how are you doing? Doing okay. Doing well. No, keep, no, on, uh, keep on going. What? No, 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 no. no, no I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. I wanted to, I wanted to ask you about the projects that you're doing because you're doing live feeds now about your art. Yes. That, that's cool. Tell us a little yes. bit about that. Um, basically got on to the, jumped onto the StreamYard bandwagon. And if you watch either my personal Facebook page or my art page, my page, you will see me live streaming art. So if you want to watch me paint, I'm painting. Oh, oh, sweet. That's, I'm exactly what my easel. <laughs> that's exactly what you were painting the last time I saw that. That was that's great there. Awesome yeah. down there. Joining below us is a uh, uh, second time he's been on there. We did an episode uh, called the uh, the Roundtable, uh, I think the Podcast Roundtable or something like that. I forgot there, uh, Mike. But we have a director, Mike Faber. You uh, probably heard him. If you're a big Whovian podcaster, you're listening to him on uh, the Earth Station Who podcast. Mike, can you tell us a little bit about Earth Station Who? Of course, Earth Station Who is part of the ESO network, and we've been doing Doctor Who podcasts now for about seven years. Mm -hmm. And we, you know, re we review Big Finish, we review old classic series episodes. We also have, you know, like episodes Who's Your Favorite Companion, Remembering This Person, or, you know, stuff like that. And of course, when the new series is like every other Doctor Who podcast out there, we review the new stories and everything. And, mm -hmm. you know, we do, you know, we consider ourselves, you know, authorities on nothing. So we're just typical Whovians and everything. And we just love to have fun and we have passion for Doctor Who. So it's pretty, pretty d decent to talk about and everything. And it's a yeah. lot of fun. It's not the definition of Whovian podcasters. We're we're ex we excel in at, at nothing. Exactly, <laughs> we're, we're experts in nothing. Exactly, but we, damn it, we could tell you which sonic screwdriver that doctor was using. Exactly, and that's all that matters. And exactly, world. and that's part of the fun. Speaking of our world, uh, we also introduce Doctor Freedom himself, Brian Barres. How you doing there, Brian? Doing okay. How's everybody out there doing tonight? We are surviving our society. This is going to be an exciting topic in the, uh, today because I wanted to talk about this a long time. But but speaking of topics, let's start off as we always do with the Who Knew News. And Dr. Freedom himself, Brian Barres, please check his channel out there on the YouTube channel. You can just look him up, Dr. Freedom. Make sure you subscribe. He always talks about news from 
from <laughs> excuse me well wow, i can't even it, it's it's that kind of night tonight uh news from in and around the universe he talks about once news drops he's talking about it, he's on top of it and gives his opinions right out there so take it away dr freedom Okay, first up on the docket, Dr. Ryder pitch comebacks for two classic villains in the modern series. And apparently Peter Harness, during the live tweet along, I believe, for the Zygon inversion invasion, you know, the big deal just happened this past weekend. Um, he messaged that he had pitched different ideas to Stephen Moffat back during that time. One, uh, one idea would have included the return of the Mara. Now, if everybody, you know, who are, well, you have to be pretty much my age, I think, to remember who the Mara are. But... Um, <laughs> The Morrow, that big snake-like entity from way back in the Peter Davison time who first appeared in the episode Kenda and then later in Snake Dance and then later, you know, they would reappear during Big Finish. And I think the last one they appeared in was Cradle of the Snake. Mm -hmm. Oh, that one was bad. But um, <laughs> he had pitched this to him back then. And also another figure that apparently he pitched that a very, you know, was very old you know, Whovians would remember he also apparently had heard um, about a pitch about the meddling monk returning. And for you folks who don't remember this episode, this was the first time, this is all the way back in the Hartnell era, where the, the, with the meddling monk, this is the first time we actually saw like another TARDIS first appear and things like that, and another member of the Doctor's race. So it was a very groundbreaking episode back for that time. Mm -hmm. And also the meddling monk, well, I don't want to spoil too much well, what happened to him, but let's just say it didn't end well for the monk, okay? Don't mess with the doc. All right, so these two characters were pitched, but apparently never, as we all know, it never quite happened. Right. So it's kind of nice, though, that you know, to hear that some of the classic villains are still being pitched. Yes, but unfortunately, we never see them. And that, oh, uh, right. well, hang on a second, Mike, I, and, and especially James on this one, and, and, and Dr. Freedom and Melanie, you know, get everybody involved. The Monk, the Ronnie, Drax, where are they? What are they doing? Why can't we go back and see them? Why can't they be in the new series? Is anybody Romana. have a comment on that? Romana. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Exactly. Romana, what's she doing? Well, she was president of Gallifrey for a while. I know. <laughs> so it's it just, you know, all depends. She has yeah. a shout out going out of business sales. So I'm then like, I know, having a garage sale out there. James, who would you want to see come back Time Lord wise besides the master for the fifth or eighth time? I'd love to see Romana come back because I was kind of when they first introduced Missy mm -hmm. and the Peter Capaldi series, I thought I kind of got, oh, it's another Time Lord. I wonder if she, she called him her boyfriend. Is this Romana? Is she like turned yeah. evil? So I would love to see Romana come back. And the monk did come back, if you remember, um, during when. If that's for me, I'm not here. I'm not no, here. No, no, no. No. I didn't do it. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> It's Romana calling. She wants. It to is be Romana back. calling. <laughs> Whatever it is, I was nowhere She's near. Calling there. collect. I'm not paying for that one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's long distance from Gallifrey. Exactly. Yeah, but they have a calling card, so you know. Exactly. They use the Sonic on the phone. That's okay. <laughs> but yeah, uh, but the monk did come back um, during one of the Dalek stories during the first oh, year. You're right. I keep forgetting that one. Yep, and then um, he also came back in some big finish. So, no, no, no. I meant that, but I'm looking for like the TV series. I, I know. apologize. I no, should I should have said no, that. But he, the monk did come back during the a second time during the first Doctor era. Right. And the, but then you know there had been talk about him coming back multiple times with the new series. It just okay. hasn't materialized with the right story yet. Yeah. Well, let me get to the comments. Uh, we, I've been waiting. I um, want to say hello to Julie Foster. How are you doing there? Also, we have Graham Krause. Hi, folks. There. Oh, Graham says the Ronnie should. I I've been an advocate of the Ronnie and the Monk to come back and and do some damage there. So uh, Candace Rochat, she says, bring her back. I'm hoping. I guess that she's me referring to Romana. And yes, yes. Answering okay. questions. <laughs> but you, Ronnie actually, yeah, Julian works. Anderson uh, had been talking about coming back as the Ronnie to yeah. Doctor Who. They, she had been in talks about it. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I, I meant the, the monk, I think, definitely comes back. I think, and I've been arguing this case, that the monk, I think, would be a great counter as opposed to the master, but um, Shasha proved me wrong on that. I, I think the monk would have been a great uh, toil for the 13th Doctor. That's just my opinion. Because when it comes to the monk, the monk goes on the, the, the moral compass of the Doctor and uses it against her. 
And I think that would have been a great, because she, she's kind of become the, oh, um, I, I'm trying not to be insulted about it. She's come up to be the, the Farrell Williams of the doctors. So she's, everybody's happy. And she's walking down the street with her, with her suspender shirt on. And I'm just like, uh, I, we need somebody that kind of puts her and says, Nope, it's not all fun and games there. And then still we got that thing where the, the 12th doctor says I've made so many mistakes and it's about time I corrected them, which I don't think he ever did during his time as the doctor there, but, um, that's just me. But, um, Brian, what else is uh, in the news today? Okay, read a new Doctor Who short story t- entitled "Press Play," and this one's a very you know, especially for you classic, you know, classic, classic, classic fans out there. Mm-hmm. This one's going to pull your heartstrings. This one's written by Pete Matig, who's written a number of episodes for the new series, and it touches upon well, in a way, I don't want to give away too much, uh, but you're, it's, it is a nice little looking back, but it's not very long. But I guarantee you, if if you're a fan of the classic series. This one's going to grab you right by the heartstrings and pull. It really is. Um, all right. To give you a thing, it does involve Susan. Just Really? That one, oh, yeah. awesome. So you may want to give this one a brief read. It, like I said, it it really amazed me how, in just so few words, he kind of like grabbed me by my old Hoovian heartstrings and mm-hmm. made me squirt a few tears, that dirty evil man. Okay. Um, <laughs> nice. Okay. <laughs> Okay, and lastly for today, David Tennant, Patrick Stewart, and Tamsin Grieg are offering to help children out during lockdown with their Shakespeare homework. Hmm. Now, apparently, during this time, they're, they're, they're going to have this email address set up where children during the lockdown can get tips and insights from leading actors, you know, about Shakespeare and all that, if they have any problems understanding it and all that. And basically, you message them, including the hashtag RSC homework help, and you can do this on Twitter, Instagram, or what you call it. And then you can also do it by email. Mm-hmm. And you'll get a response from, hopefully, Patrick Stewart, Tamsin Grieg, or David Tennant, a.k.a., you know, well, whatever number of doctor he is now. Uh, it changes oh. by the week. We don't know. Where was this crap when I was growing up, for crying out loud? Where was <laughs> where was all these people when I was growing up? I'm like, I don't understand my science homework. Can I talk to Stephen Hawking, please? <laughs> Is he available? That was the- <laughs> Somebody give me the time of day on this one. <laughs> Good. Night. I just think it's very nice, you know, that they're you know taking this a little bit of time out, you know, to help out kids and all that. Especially, you know, mm-hmm. Patrick Stewart, he's been reading sonnets every day on Twitter and various other things. Yep. One and a day. So, so it's been very, you know, nice that they've been taking time out, you know, for the kids and all that who are stuck home. You know, maybe hopefully learn a little something about, you know, this literary figure. Yes. Well, speaking of literary figures, we are on a hard break. When we return, we're going to be talking with all these friends of mine uh, about a wonderful companion, Sarah Jane Smith and the lovely actress, Lizbeth Sladen. When we return, please stay, continue, stay logged on, tune in, and become part of the legend. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to The Legend of the Traveling Tardis radio show. My name is Christian Basil. Whether you're listening to us right now on iHeart or iTunes or Spotify speaker, wherever, CBS radio, or if you're watching us live, please make sure that you're including yourself into the chat right now. We're going to be answering your questions live out there. To my, got it right, to my left is James, ah, there we go. Hi, <laughs> James Enstall of geek to me Radio. We also have director and lovely Melanie Dean, Pieces of May Lee. Uh, you can check her out on her Instagram. You can also check out her art live. We have director Mike Faber from uh, Earth Station Who and Dr. Freedom himself. Now, we're going to be talking about this lovely lady, uh, Sarah Jane Smith. Sorry, that is the wrong Sarah Jane Smith. That's Sarah Jane Smith <laughs> there. Um, I see yeah. what you did there. Uh, you see what I did there? Uh, uh, Back in 1973, with the departure of uh, Katie Manning, we had a new companion come in called Sarah Jane Smith. Uh, She appeared in The Time Warriors. And she would continue to be on until about midway through the fourth Doctor series. Uh, I'm trying to remember the episode. Oh, gosh. Why can I? Oh, The Hand of Fear. Gosh, I'm 
Take my Eldred right. shall live. Uh, what's that? Yes. Eldred, Eldred must live. live. Eldred must live there. And we finally got to see her departure. A little flash forward in 1981. John Nathan Turner brings her back to do one episode of a series that should have happened, but unfortunately just didn't pick up. Canine and Company, which was a, a bit of a Christmas story. And it brought back a Canine Mach 3 to help her out in her adventures. And then she would return again for The Five Doctors, where she, um, was it her or was it Susan who tripped over the rock? Or both of them tripped over a rock or something like that. Or both of them had a hard time running away no, or something. She fell down the sh most shallow ravine on planet Earth. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> or on whatever planet it was. I think it was Gallifrey. In yeah, the and then you, they had to pull her out with ropes, even though uh, like a toddler could have went up that hill, yeah. okay? Stand up. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> and she was wearing that really bad raincoat too. I know. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I yeah. was not the only one that thought. About to say it looks good on Eve Miles. It didn't work in this case. Oh, nope. Poor girl <laughs> there. Later on, uh, Elizabeth Sladen would re uh, reprise her role for a little series they called the Sarah Jane Adventures for a short time. And unfortunately, um, Liz Sladen would lose her life to cancer, uh, which uh, she passed away April 19th, 2011, at the age of 65 in London, England. Um, well, and that was they, a they got the idea for the Sarah Jane Adventures because she had appeared in school reunion with David right. Tennant. Right. Yeah. And it was such a popular episode that it literally rang through the halls of the BBC. Wait a minute, we could do something with this. <laughs> yeah, and she uh, I think she ran, if I'm not mistaken, for five seasons. I mean, yep. pretty long for somebody who was just a companion from the original show and to have her own series, and she had all these kids that uh, would encompass her, and Mr. Smith, of course, the computer that would help her out along the way. And One then other kind mention, if I can. Yeah. I, I don't mean yeah, to interrupt. Yeah. She had done a series on Big Finish, and it ran, I think, two series, I believe. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, because she got you know, called for the Sarah Jane Adventures, they ended it on a cliffhanger. <laughs> <laughs> and it never ended. But it, it, you can still find copies out there, if I remember right, of the Sarah Jane Big Finish Adventures. I know there's some drifting around on eBay or something like that out there, and they were pretty good. And then she would open up her little home on Bannerman Road, and... Um bring in all these kids, Mr. Smith, and do all these. Uh, and I, I like the, f I, I, I was kind of taken aback as to, they brought K-9 back, but they put him in a, in, in like a black hole that was about to collapse on something. And then he would rotate. I was like, that is the most weirdest thing to do to K-9 to kind rights of, issues. what's that? I heard something about rights issues at that time. I, I'm sure because mm -hmm. weren't they making K-9 the series in another, in another country at the time? I and that just kind of. Yeah. That Australian series, I think yeah. it was. Yeah. Yeah. Or where they totally it. redesigned it to look like a iPad or something. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> there. Yeah, you had flying K9 now. Yeah, <laughs> K9 mock, whatever the heck that was. The action there. figure possibilities for all the K9 figures they could have sold. I know. Yeah. Well, even the in the Farewell Sarah Jane, they make a quick note of what happens to K9 and that mm -hmm. Ronnie takes them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, she's kind of like taking over the mantle. Hello, Mrs. Freedom. And there, I, I guess she put a little thing or something. Lady Gallifrey. Yeah, there she is. Lady <laughs> Gallifrey herself there. And I'm bringing back an old note. This uh, would have um, this would have me so much back at DPH. I hope Candace, you can elaborate that. I think she was talking earlier about when um, we were talking about all these actors helping you out with Shakespearean stuff out there. Uh, well, James, what is your earliest memory of sarah jane smith what's uh, let me let me change that look what's your fondest memory of sarah jane smith well being as i was introduced to doctor who through new who uh mm -hmm. and then i purposely went back and got involved in the classic series because i wanted to kind of catch up on all the stuff i missed mm -hmm. uh, i mostly remember her being introduced in david Tennant's run so that was my first experience with her but i loved her uh i went back and watched some of the tom baker episodes mm -hmm. and i thought arc in space, she was great. Uh, she was obviously, it showed her as a very take charge, plucky, strong, independent. She wasn't going to, you know, just wait for the men to come rescue her kind of person. So that, uh, because I guess that was my first Sarah Jane classic episode, that kind of arc in space always holds a special place for me. Gotcha. So you actually saw Sarah Jane, you hadn't seen the classic who, you saw Sarah Jane in class in school reunion and then went back to see her. Is that yeah. correct? Yeah, because I was I was introduced. Uh, uh, Chris Eccleston was my first doctor, mm -hmm. and then I would 
decided to go back and see what the classic stuff was all about because obviously they were making references in school reunion to canine and i kind of wanted to see where all this came from and just got swept over in the richness of the classic series gotcha there melanie what's your what's your uh favorite memory of sarah jane smith um it's honestly going to be mimic a lot of of james's um comments because i'll i started with you know the, i know that i remember the fourth doctor from pbs but mm -hmm. that wasn't during for here that sarah jane wasn't really in it when the parts that i remember watching where we only had like maybe a season or two and then it kind of re we played again so i was really introduced to her character in new who and then was like oh wait and then once i got back into new who saw her like wait i really wanted to get back into classic and luckily either netflix or one of them was having it so i could go back to everything and then went through the whole of fourth the fourth doctor because i was i didn't start when i went to fourth because that's the one i wanted to see again mm -hmm. and i'm like oh wait, wait he had a lot more companions and then seeing <laughs> sarah jane and oh my god i adored harry i love the, those three i like the fourth doctor sarah jane and harry that was like my, my favorite TARDIS like companion piece, whatever. Um, so yeah, any any of those honestly were like my favorite. How much I really like Sarah Jane in that. It's always going to be the, the the scene of him with the two the, the two wires trying right. to think whether or not he's going to blow up a Dalek, and she is just here. You've already seen her on every other time. She's the one that's the voice of reason, the voice yes. of compassion, and she's not at that point. She is the absolute no, no, you're going to, you can see she's about to just grab his hands and just do it herself. So right. that's always the most, not a little, little bit out of character, but I think it's the most passionate we saw Sarah Jane. It's not out of character, but do you think that was the right call for the right reason? You, you Do you think in that episode, because she knew what was going to happen. She knows the, the 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 dangers of the Daleks. Now here's a one time where you know, in throughout her whole life, she's always been the compassionate woman. You know, that uh, to try to do the right thing. And in fact, um, Mike, I'm going to get you into the origins. But that one moment you said was completely different from her characterization. It was because of desperation, or do you think that's what Sarah Jane would have done? I think sometimes that the right thing isn't mm -hmm. always the only choice. Both gotcha. of them, I think, were doing the right thing. Just one was stunk, was doing it more broad scope for, not humanity, but for the lives that were going on and everything and seeing big picture. And mm -hmm. he was thinking about from more, even the more so the moral high ground on a different, it was just two, it was two forks in the same road right. that were right. They were both seeing the big picture, but from different perspectives. Yeah. She was seeing it from the perspective of the universe, people that were affected, everything and mm -hmm. basically you know here's your chance to kill hitler before yeah. he starts everything but he's looking at a big picture from from the dimension from time from all of the universe the aspects from different dimensions and such an, a, a, an aspect that she is not able to see but he can and say wait a minute i, I do i have a right to do this is, my, is this my position and it's it, it's mm -hmm. one of my favorite scenes not only of doctor yeah. who i mean of, of classic who or Doc, but all of doctor who because those two were in the room together, and I think that was some of the best acting. And there's oh, yeah. Tom and Baker a, at his best. And it's a great ethical, you know, dilemma. Mm -hmm. What do you do? And here's the weird part: it's the doctor who has the dilemma. It's not him putting the wires together. It's her going, "Just do it." And he's having all these second thoughts, and then just like, "Are you sure that this is the right thing? Do I have the right?" Mike, that is one of my favorite scenes. But what's your favorite scene? I'm going to tell you mine. Um, because there was an interview be, uh, with Tom Baker expressing himself how the the alien side of Sarah with interacting with Sarah Jane is the arc in space where he's taunting her when she gets stuck into that little, um, I guess, what was it? The little corridor or for a better term there, she's stuck in there and the doctor just razzes her and just, oh, doctor. <laughs> it's just like. Oh, exactly. Well, you also have to realize that's mm -hmm. part, Sarah Jane was the first feminist companion yeah and you know she was the reporter she was you know the one who was out on her own and she pretended to be her aunt to join with the third doctor mm -hmm. and to go after in the solarians and it was interesting because the episode you mentioned uh with the ark in space was one of my first times i had experienced sarah jane smith and it was so awesome to be able to see her and to 
you know, do it. And her, when the doctor was taunting her to make, cause she was like, I can't make it through. Cause she was in this air duct and she was just like, I can't make it through doctor. I can't, what can I do? And, you know, he says, Oh, okay. Stay there. You know, you're just a little girl, you know, blah, blah, mm -hmm. blah. And he razzed her into it. And then from that point, you knew the kind of relationship they had together. And it was just awesome. And everything, and, and it's a complete flip because when she first met the John Pervy Doctor, the third Doctor, she was hardcore feminist. Oh, big time! I mean, a bit, I mean, completely. And to see her in that tube, stuck in there with the fourth Doctor rising, I'm like, my God! She, I wouldn't say that it was a different characterization, but I think she's kind of grown to the Doctor to where she first had that wall, I think, mm -hmm. with the third doctor. Because she, she didn't know who to trust him. And at first she was like, I don't, I don't trust you. I, I have no idea why I should be trusting you at all. But now to let down the guard, and then she's in a moment where she is in a crisis, and here comes the fourth doctor and just goes, mm -mm, do it yourself. <laughs> you, have, <laughs> you, you have to realize this is the second storyline with yeah. the fourth doctor. And, right. and it was awesome. And it, it just tied in so well together. Mm -hmm. And you could see why, you know, to this day, the 10th doctor or any of the doctors considers Sarah Jane his best friend you know, type thing. And they, F Dr. Four and Sarah Jane had the best chemistry. Yeah. Flat out, you know, and it was just sad to see when, you know, she had to leave the series and everything. And it was just like, and, you know, how popular she was. No other companion was ever given their own yeah. TV, a chance yeah. at their own TV show yeah. or anything. Right. You're not seeing, you never saw Rose and her adventures with Mickey or something, you know, or, you know, something like that or something like that. It was just, it was just craziness. But also she, I think I, if anybody can remember this, I've never seen it. I've just heard of it, but something called downtime. Mm -hmm. If anybody, I do you remember anything of that nature, uh, Mike, do you remember downtime? Cause I don't remember it. I've all. heard of it. I've never seen it. Okay. It's been a long, long time since I've seen it, but yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Dr. Freedom, hold that thought because we're on a commercial break. The next question is going to be yours in just a moment there. When we return, folks, we're going to be talking more about companion Sarah Jane Smith, the woman who would change the universe forever and and wonderfully. So when we return, please continue to stay logged on, tuned in, and become part of the legend. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Legend of the Traveling Tardis radio show. My name is Christian Basil, the host of the Legend of the Traveling Tardis. I'm with here with my friends James Enstall from geek to me Radio. I'm with here director Melanie Dean and Artis. Make sure you catch out her YouTube, uh, her um, her fa uh, streaming live here on the Facebook channel, um, where she does her live artistry. Definitely want to check that out out there. I'm here with director Mike Faber of Earth Station Who, and finally, Dr. Freedom himself, Brian Burress there. Brian, um, the question that we were going to before the break was um, your favorite moment of Sarah Jane Smith. And notice that I've left out not Elizabeth Slayton, but of yeah. Sarah Jane Smith. But before we do, I just want to say hi to Jen Hogan, who said hi before the commercial break there. How are you doing there, Jen? Thanks for everybody, and thank you all for joining us here. We're hoping you're having a great time. Again, remember, just type into the chat if you have any questions or you want to comment yourself, your favorite moments, your favorite memory of Elizabeth Slayton and uh, Sarah Jane Smith. So, Brian, take it away. Well, my very first, very first episode of Doctor Who was in the summer of 83, and that was the Suntaran Experiment. Mm -hmm. And that's when I fell in love with this young woman named Sarah Jane Smith and also began to admire a fellow named Harry Sullivan, you know, played by Ian Martin, who <laughs> Sadly, pass, you know, long yeah. before Sarah did, and long before Elizabeth did. Um, yeah, she, there was just so many great adventures she had with the Doctor, and it's just, she seemed to be so different from all the previous companions that we had had before. She did more than just, you know, stand there, you know, hand the Doctor his instruments and tell him how brilliant he was, as the Brigadier would put it. Or right. um, Doctor, what is it? Yeah, so... <laughs> That's what I loved, you know, she, you know, and as I got further, further into the show, especially 
when school reunion came around, like I said, I actually got a little heart flutter there when I saw her, you know, walk onto that screen and talk with David Tennant. And of course, me being an old fan, I know the relationship between these two. It was kind of mm -hmm. like a nifty little, you know, little Easter egg for us folks from the classic series because everybody's like, okay, wait a minute. He obviously knows her, but meanwhile, we're going, yeah, he does. You know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> we Yeah, we know what's going on there. We know what's going on out there. But well, well, she, was, um, she was one of the longest running companions. She was. She's definitely up there in the top five, I believe, of longest running. And it's just, she just, I don't know how to best describe it. She just hit off with Baker so well. And then when she went out on her own, she was so fierce, so strong, independent. You know, this is the kind of person that if I had a dilemma, I'd want her researching it. You know, she's, you know, her character of Sarah Jane, you know, evolved more mm -hmm. than anything over time, you know, with her time as the doctor and with her time in the Sarah Jane adventures and became such a strong present, you know, figure that, you know, like I said, the, the day she passed, you know, I had friends of mine going, you know, because I was actually walking around work that day and I had to do a 10 hour shift and I had tears in my eyes that whole day because I'm sitting here thinking, even though I didn't know this person, you know, I didn't know Liz Sladen, this person who had been coming into my life for nearly 30 years was now gone. Mm -hmm. And that's how I thought it was like I lost an old, you know, dear friend. And that's how I still feel to this day. I'm, I'm, I'm very sad. And I never got to meet her in person, Liz Slayton. And but it's just, you know, very sad that, you know, she's no longer with us, but she lives on, you know, mm -hmm. through her legacy here. So gotcha. speaking of which, let me just grab this one chat real fast there. Uh, Jaden Cabral, thank you for saying, hi. I think she meant love there. Yeah, there you go. Love. Love Sarah Jane Smith. And my favorite Sarah Jane Smith was when she first met the 10th Doctor. The look of David when he first saw. Yeah, I got to give David Tennant some, some kudos to that. Because you could see in his eyes all the doctors turning around looking at her for the very first time going like, wait, that's Sarah Jane. That, that was, um, that was you know, and I was, my personal geeking out moment at that time was happening, going on out there. Um, Mike, I just, when you first saw a uh, school reunion, knowing Sarah Jane, in that first moment that David Tennant looks at her, what was your reaction to that? Oh, my heart fluttered also. It was just like, ah, oh, it is awesome to see her back. And she looked so beautiful. She aged yeah. so well. And the great thing about it is the look on Tennant's face was genuine because he was a fanboy anyway. Right, exactly. And this is the first time he got to do a scene with her together as the doctor because they, they crossed paths earlier in that episode, but not him as the doctor. And with her, her seeing the TARDIS and the doctor being there, it was just like, oh, that was so cool. I could, I just, I, I literally was like, oh my God, what, what are they going to say next? I mm -hmm, think that exactly. was, a, what are they going to say to each other? What's that first line? And his first line is going to be typical doctor. Hello, Sarah Jane. And I was just like, oh my God. And, and, then, she, and her was like, you left me at the wrong place. <laughs> <laughs> that was just so classic. That was just awesome. I loved how they even called that back, like with the twelfth Doctor, when at one point he was going through flashcards, and mm -hmm. one of them was something like it had the word Aberdeen in it. Yes. Um, and I, I can't remember what the flashcard was, but it was another nod of you went the wrong place and dropped her off, and that was not where she was supposed to be. Nope. Oh my god! I just I, I, because that was the running gag, wasn't that that she he she dropped him off at the at the wrong spot. And that was kind of a, I think, running gag through the Hooniverse. And now that was brought up actually in school reunion. Um, but, you so, could, but you could tell that she's been waiting for years yes. to tell him <laughs> that. And that was just awesome. It's like, it, it was almost like you left me at the altar. You ran away. I had family invited. <laughs> you just ran away there. You were supposed um, to come back for me. <laughs> Since James and Melanie, you both were, were part of the new who, I don't know um, how you guys felt, the banter between um, Rose and Sarah Jane when they first meet. 
And folks, if you uh, want to join us in the conversation, please go ahead and continue to chat. If you're on the Legend of the Traveling Tardis site, Hanging With site, or Krypton Radio, just put your uh, message through the Facebook page, and we'll get to your chats. But what did you two think when you saw Girlfriend versus the Misses? Oh, that was that was absolutely well played because you know that the subtext for Ten and Rose was a boyfriend girlfriend kind of thing, and clearly, if you go through all of the the classic Who, yeah. Four and Sarah Jane was another one. So having the two of them just be very jealous at each other <laughs> was hilarious. Was was you know just kind of biting at that, just uh, almost taunting a cat fight kind of ish, where they were just throwing barbs at one another. But then finally having that how they that little bonding moment yeah. at his expense was <laughs> absolutely hilarious because then they were just kind of pulling apart just different nuances of a character that never changed. That right. the fact that he's always talking to the TARDIS, that he's always touching the TARDIS, that he's doing, you know, that if that once you start saying something and then he gives you that look that you just dribbled on your shirt, you know, that I thought that and they were both just understanding those little things. And I just loved how how Ten comes in there and he's like, wait, what? 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 <laughs> and he's just freaking out because he's like, wait, 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 what's going on? Ah, mm -hmm. I, I, I thought it, it, they, it was it was architected very well. It was kind of like of, uh, and then the, the handshake, the bond. To me, it felt like, because, you know, I was divorced already at that point, and I was dating oh my, my current wife, and the first time my ex had met my wife, it was just like, <gasps> and I felt like the 10th Doctor. I so felt for him at that point. <laughs> I just, I, the the thing was, is that when it came to the 4th Doctor, and I've seen interviews with Tom Baker, and one of his things uh, when he was taking on the doctor was there was no relationship. There was there was no like love. There was always that friendship. They were always the best friends. But did anybody actually see a connection between Four and Sarah Jane as oh it might be more than just friends? No, that I ever picked up on now. No, but then it, it kind of self revealed in 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 school reunion when she's talking the. Uh, when she's talking to Rose and they're kind of like one upping each other. And when she finally says the Loch Ness monster and just like, seriously, <laughs> you know, it's just like, they're, they're, they're going over like what was their worst villain at the time. You know, it's just like met the emperor when they were talking about the Daleks and it was just like, wow, I just, I, I yeah. I think that, that, that it, it translates a well for an audience to think the whole girlfriend kind of, piece to it yeah. but i think really what that was was a sense of abandonment that they both had mm -hmm. that being left because that was a, a overlying kind of or underlying arc with rose is that any minute she was just going to be dropped off and here you have sarah jane who literally was dropped off in aberdeen when it was supposed to be freaking south croydon and you know she she's been hurt by that not only did this person that you know and trust drop you off and you know, never came back and found you, but he dropped you off the wrong damn place. So you, you know, <laughs> you've been thinking the whole time, uh, do you really not pay attention to me at all? So I think that was really, yes, it could translate into like the whole girlfriend piece easily. Mm -hmm. But I think really from an acting almost wise, I think the two of them, I would think that that, that from at least looking at it from a script wise, it was literally a abandonment thing of, oh, you're just the next in a long line. Wait, yeah. What? I mean, I'm, 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 I'm replaceable. What do you mean? I'm a replaceable. I will have to say the little cherry on top of that scene between Elizabeth and uh, Billy Piper was Mickey's reaction to watching the two of them go back <laughs> and forth was just, that was priceless too. Cause he was enjoying the crap out of that. Yeah. The grin on his face was <laughs> classic. Exactly. It's like, yeah, I'm the tin dog. <laughs> when he has that realization <laughs> at the very end. Yeah. He's a tight there. Um, so we get to so uh so Elizabeth Sladen, she's offered the Sarah Jane Adventures. What did you guys think of at the run? And, and anybody can pick it up. What did you think of the series? And do you think that was a good uh, homage to the Sarah Jane character? I guess we'll start with Doctor Freedom. It's been a while, um, Brian, since we haven't heard from you yet. Well, you could tell it was aimed at a younger audience, but at the same mm -hmm. time, it was still just as much Doctor Who to me, but with her taking on the central role. Um, you know, she's taking all these kids under her wing, and she's, you know, gone off to explore things and learn things on her own. And that's what I loved about it was the fact that, you know, she didn't really need the Doctor to continue her adventure. And the fact that, you know, we're getting to experience, you know, her on her own with these kids and these various different adventures, 
Side note, yes, Bradley Walsh did play a villain in that series, by the way, for you right. folks who are curious. Yeah, I think it was Day of the Clown. Um, but other than that, like I said, it's just it was just amazing to me that you know she came back, she carried it off, and she did so for so you know for almost five years. Sadly, you know, her health began to deteriorate and she passed when they were partway through filming of season five. So not all of season five got to be made. So, you know, just the fact she was still out there, you know, doing things on her own really just, you know, amazed me. It really had me going. Um, I think one of the things I wish, um, and they were starting to do, and we've mentioned this a lot on the, on the show with the Sarah Jane adventures was that not only was it, I think it was a good homage to Sarah Jane and Elizabeth Sladen for the world that she had taken and made her own. But then we started to kind of see through like Katie Manning, what could have been. Um, to see with uh, with others uh, with other uh, Doctor Who companions, and I know we we talked uh, a lot with Sophie Aldridge. She was the next person to be there. What and anybody can pick at this. What direction if 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 Elizabeth Sladen were still alive to play the role? What direction do you think, and what companion would you have liked to have seen on the Sarah Jane Adventures? Who do you think the next person should have been in line? Obviously, Ace. Yeah, like we said, um, I wouldn't have mind seeing somehow maybe Fraser return as Jamie. But I he would... has a memory loss, though, doesn't he? He can't remember. Wibbly he could just be walking wobbly. around yeah. like, oh, I, I, I know I'm wibbly supposed to be here. Tub, <laughs> you know, you know, he could pretend he's an Outlander or something. You know, something oh, nice. like that. <laughs> you know, something like that. But yeah. I would have liked to see, you know, Fraser, of course, but I wouldn't have mind seeing, like we said earlier, Romana somehow coming into it. I think that would have been pretty awesome. You know, as long as long as it's not Mel, I'm fine with. Oh my god! (laughs) Are we going to torture poor Bonnie Langford for the rest of her life? Yes. See, I would I would love to see Romana, but like the Juliet Landau portrayal of Romana. I would, I would, I'll, I, where, who do I need to fight to see that happen to actually be into the TV series just to kind of even give more credence to her, all of her big finish as Romana? I think that would, oh, God, that'd be amazing. Be but, would be awesome. would, but if I could w- bring back, you know, uh, Slayton, I would have loved just to see her with Katie Manning, just Joe. Joe's out the, again, just, just give me, give me more of that, the, the grounded, it's almost like an odd couple with, the, with, with those two. Let me wrap that, a that kind of feel. Let me wrap this up with this question with this segment. Mm-hmm. Captain Jack. He was there once. <laughs> and all oh, true. Flirt- at the end of time. Yeah. Yeah. That's she, I mean, true. she was there with the whole that whole ten, the tenth doctor crew when they I were flying everybody back. Yeah. yeah. When they were but, singing Kumbaya together, it was awesome. Mm-hmm. But we remember um the big finish one, uh the green life between Captain Jack and um the uh, and and uh Joe Grant. Joe. Uh, what what would have happened if there were an episode between Sarah Jane and Captain Jack just being by themselves alone? I think that would be I, I think that would be tremendously awesome. There. Speaking of awesome, oh no, go ahead, Mike. We'll go. We'll, no, we'll go I was going to say real quick. You remember she didn't really approve of what Torchwood was doing either. Yeah, I was. Yeah. That's what I was going to mention. Yeah, yeah, she's going like not for the kids. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, too many guns. Too many guns there, folks. When we come back, we're. Uh, um, when we return, we're going to be talking up and wrapping up the segment of uh, Sarah Jane Smith and the legacy of Elizabeth Slade. And we return. And the question of this episode, is there a future for Sarah Jane Smith? Or have we seen the end or yet when we return? Please continue to stay logged on, tune in, and continue to become part of the legend. Is, it, is this the final segment? It is? Yeah? Okay. Is this the last segment? Your audio is off. That's why. <laughs> yes, this is the last segment. Okay, okay, gotcha. Lost count. I lost count. Sorry. You lost count. Hey, everybody, this is what happens behind the scenes. This is, what <laughs> out. this is why you stop and see me put my head down. Put my this yeah, this, this will, I thought she was just this waving. Is, uh, yeah. yeah, this will be <laughs> in the <laughs> <laughs> this will be in the outtakes episode. Thank you very much. Very much. Very much. Okay, ready? Uh, yes, I am. Five.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Legend of the Traveling Tardis radio show and our uh, final part of the discussion of the character known as Sarah Jane Smith, the woman who would change the universe forever. My name is Christian Basil. Thank you for joining us, and thank you for staying logged on and tuning into our episode. I'm here with James Enstall from geek to me Radio. I'm here with our lovely director, Pieces of Melee, Melanie Dean. Artis, make sure you see her live shows when they come out. Director, Mike Faber from Earth Station Who, and Brian Barres, Dr. Freedom himself on the YouTube channel. So um, I, I got I, I gotta make a confession here. I did not want to swatch that video when Farewell Sarah Jane came out, and I knew Russell T Davis put that out there. Yeah, Niagara Falls. I, I knew that was gonna, Niagara Falls was going to happen. There was it was for it was, clumped. What can I say? <laughs> <laughs> I just I, I I I could not bring myself to do it. And then I finally just said, you know, I, I was sitting in the car and I said, you know, I, I, I was, I think I was waiting for something, I, something was going on at the time. And then I said, you know, I'll just watch in the car because if I'm going to ball my eyes out, I want to do it where nobody's looking at me. So I did it in the car. So starting with you, James, first of all, everybody's seen Farewell Sarah Jane, correct? I did not see the whole thing. I saw you have a not couple clips. You know, I, oh. I, don't, I, I didn't want to put myself through the emotional ringer, and I saw, like, she's, stop it. No, the other way. I'm looking the wrong way. See? Uh, uh, bye, James. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. I've been demoted. Look at this. I'm down here now. Welcome to the bottom. Welcome to the bottom. <laughs> no, I, I saw, I kept seeing clips of it, and every time I'd start to play it, I was at work or I'm, I'm like, I can't put myself through this now. I'm going to wait. And I waited and I just never got around to actually seeing the whole thing. Okay. Well, you saw part of it. What, what was your emotion? What was your reaction to it when you start first start watching it? Just with anything. Cause I'm, I'm a very, uh, I, I cry at like stupid Hallmark commercials and stuff like that. So <laughs> just, just seeing it start. And I was like, Oh man, it's just so good with anything else. Um, I, I, I cry when the doctor regenerates, like Peter Capaldi's last. So I knew something like this. This mm -hmm. is a woman we don't have in – see, I'm already started. This is a woman we don't have in the world anymore. And it's right. – uh, oh. it's just I, – I couldn't take it at the time. So I just kind of – I pressed pause, was getting it back to it, and I just – I haven't been able to. No, no, no. I, I, I got to agree. When I was sitting down there, um, when it got to uh, the Ronnie uh, – the Ronnie. When it got to Ronnie's um, – discussion i had to pause i had to stop that's when i like i th this is going to overload now and i just could not take it and i stopped i think at least three times because i was listening to the eulogy uh, i think even what who was the bad guy it was the trickster who showed up right yeah yeah just for so like they all had to stop and yeah. deal with the trickster and it was it was almost like even in her passing for a better term you know, we still had one last adventure for everybody to go on. One last thing. There. Mm -hmm. Melanie, you're hearing, uh, you're watching it. How? What's your reaction to it? Oh, it was like James. I started tearing up. And the sad thing is I'm a robot. It's hard to get me to cry. Yeah. I have no heart. I am just a stone cold. I have no emotions. <laughs> it's not. It, it just, <laughs> I don't. I mean, this is, I mean, I, I'm that monster that doesn't cry at funerals. I, I just don't. It, it's, I'll start misting. And this is one of the few things that I started misting on. And honestly, it was at, and I don't want to give James a spoiler, so like, not listen to this part. Um, when Ronnie at the end says, you know, farewell, and she turns, I, because I already knew that I saw the tear kind of going down her eye, down, down her cheek. Yeah. When she turns, I could swear that I thought it was with enough weight that it kind of flew off. And I'm like, <clears throat> and it got me. Oh my goodness! But yeah, it was. I thought I and I wasn't prepared for because I I kind of went into it blind. I yeah. wasn't prepared for then for for the narrator to kind of go and then she said and then all of a sudden there's Katie Manning and then there's you know and they're doing their all in character right. and as if you could just see like they were standing outside, you know, after the memorial they're standing in their small groups talking to one another and okay I need to go blah 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 you know it's you just felt that and considering we're in the middle of a pandemic where people can't just get together and this, they were able to film these things on their phones right. for the most part and be able to get the shot lined up. And you just, there's nothing around them. There's no set. They're just wearing what they wear. And those people were in their characters and they gave it at like 130, hundred million percent to that little tiny camera phone. And it translated beautifully. Gotcha. 
Mike, you watched the episode. What finally got to you at during the uh, during? The I had to blame it on allergies. That's what I. You know, I keep <laughs> telling everyone. You know, it, it was the, a really bad pollen day that day. You know? <laughs> You know, I had already started working from home by that point. And so I was here in my office and I was just like, oh, what? Uh, yeah, uh, it's wonderful. It's great. The fields just started coming everywhere. And I loved how they were saying which companions were there, even Ian and Barbara. And on the, you know, the episode when Matt Smith's doctor was... Um, on Sarah Jane Adventures, they had brought up that, you know, basically because of the travels with the first doctor, Ian and Barbara were mortal and, you know, they were, they stopped aging. And so it was just awesome to see them there, you know, hearing that they were there and just all, of it. and then to see all the different cameos they had, it was just like, oh, this is just awesome. And to find out what happened to the kids and, you know, that Mr. Smith is still there waiting for the next adventure. Yeah. That was just awesome to see. And it was just like, okay, I'm not going to cry anymore <laughs> and about it. And, you know, Elizabeth Sladen was my first crush ever, you know, and this was probably, I was eight years old, nine years old. And it was like, this is what it's like to like a female. Oh, okay. This is awesome. You know? And it was, it was, there's just so, like something about her that I just loved. And every companion since mm -hmm. has had to live up to her. And wow. Okay. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's just awesome. And this, the series and the special they did was just perfect for it. It was a great sound off. And that's it, it's actually as funny as it sounds. I've always thought of Sarah Jane as my kid's sister when I was watching that series. And I think I just grew up at the right time during that series because then Leela came in and then I kind of kind of liked the companion a little bit more than I should have. But I've always thought of Sarah Jane being like the, the kid sister who wa wants to take care of everybody, you know, the motherly sister. Even when, when um, the, you know, even when the doctor does his thing. I think Sarah Jane still tries to stand her ground on what's morally correct mm -hmm. with what's going on. Brian, um, I've always had this question about what, what RTD did because RTD wrote this and I thought it was beautiful enough that when Sarah Jane ended, because RTD, Russell T. Davis, didn't want the series to end. It, it was like she, and the adventure continues. Even there, I think that's a, the moniker that they use at the end of the uh, Sarah Jane shows, like the adventure never ends or the adventure continues. And then I heard the, the farewell to Sarah Jane. Now I don't want to, I don't want to blow it for James or anybody who hasn't seen it that, but do you think this was a better ending to what they gave Sarah uh, during the Sarah Jane ventures? Or do you think maybe we should have kept it the other way? I was always hoping that they would acknowledge, you know, Sarah Jane's passing. You know, you know, we you know, we tend to think, of course, you know, Liz Sladen the person and Sarah Jane the character, but to me, she made that character. And, you know, even though her daughter has taken on the mantle for big finish, um, to me, she's always gonna be the you know, definitive Sarah Jane Smith. So right. in a way, I kind of wish that they had recognized you know, a long time ago before this, that, yeah, that, you know, something had happened where Sarah Jane had passed and then everyone has to pick up the pieces and move on, which sadly is a part of life. Death is a part of life. And we have to learn, you know, to take, you know, what was given us from this person and use it in our own experience going forward. Um, even RTD, I believe many years later, I think he wrote, if, if I'm, I'm going off memory here, I believe it was Benjamin Cook. He had written that he had wished he had not ended the series where it did, that maybe it was a bad idea to have just ended it that way and not have it carry on. Maybe it was someone else. And see, that's the, the great thing, even though, you know, the Sarah, character Sarah, Sarah Jane's, Jane's cousin daughter, or something like that. <laughs> yeah. Or, yeah. Someone else could have picked it up. You know, like I said, to me, I can see a Bannerman road series right now. You don't even have to have, you know, it would still carry on in her name, but I'd call it Bannerman road. That'd be mm -hmm. my thought. And then, you know, maybe have someone else step in 
and help them, you know, pick up the pieces and keep moving forward in her name. But like I said, so I don't wait, you know, I think it was long overdue that they had, you know, acknowledged that, you know, she's no longer with us, but she's always going to be with us in a way because yeah. she's, she's the commandant. Like, as Mike said, she set the bar. She really did. Yeah. She set yeah. it very high. So I'm just glad. Yeah. They did finally acknowledge that. Yeah. Her character has passed on, but she'll always be remembered. Like I said, my only big beef, and I know some folks didn't like the fact I mentioned it, is that I believe Tom Baker should have narrated this. Oh, because if he had, I guarantee you, there would have been tears streaming out my eyes. Out oh, my I would have. That, that's it. Yeah, that that would have. It should have. It should have ended me. that way. I, I, it I'm going to have been Tom Baker. I should. Uh, let, let's get to the chats real fast because we're wrapping. We're getting close to the wrap up show. Graham Cor uh, Kraus. There's a short with Eleven and Joe Grant. She says he never came back to check on her. Um, and we got Mick Price. Thank you guys for joining us here. Greetings from Mick Price, North Hollywood, by way of Pomona, California. Yep, that's right. right there. And ga uh, great gag real material kids. Th thanks, thanks, Mick. I really appreciate that. Are there any plans to have a different actress a la Richard Herndell and David Bradley? Well, as funny as you say that, um, Big Finish has already announced this lovely young lady is going to be Sadie taking Bell. over her mother on the Big Finish as sarah jane smith uh throughout the big finish uh, episodes there and i guess I'll, I'll wrap this up with the question then we'll just go go through the conventions real fast do you think this should be the end or do you think sadie should pick up the mantle and run with it anybody can take that question. well they they did the same thing already with caroline john's daughter so yeah. she stepped in to play liz shaw and she did it brilliantly she <laughs> she did it very convincingly so you know, in the fact that they're, you know, looking, you know, to the daughters first, you know, shows that they're honoring, you know, the mother's memory by having them take it on. So as long as the stories are good and they stay in line with the character and all that, I have no problem with it at all. Mm -mm. Yep, I, I agree. agree. Yep. I'm totally for that. You know, the same way you have Fraser Hines doing the second doctor in the Big mm -hmm. Finish Adventures. I definitely think Elizabeth's daughter definitely should be taking over. And she sounds just like her mom anyway, so it's perfect. Yeah, from the clips I've heard, she she does it brilliantly. She she's stepped right into the roles. I can't wait to hear that. I'm a, I guess it's no different than three guys taking on the first doctor. Um yep. <laughs> Uh, Bradley, uh, and, there's, and, there's a uh, joke there somewhere. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you know, mention, you know you've had Tim Trelore oh, step in as the third doctor, which you've also really had, uh, I believe it's Elliot Benjamin stepped in as Ben Jackson mm -hmm. for a time. You know, sadly, like as I said before, death is a part of life, but even though the person who originally played this character is no longer with us, doesn't mean that that character can't go on. You know, and in a way, it's honoring the person who brought it to us memory by having that person's legacy continue. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So in the best way I can put this and wrapping it up in, in, in the way that you'd said it, um, this, this song is ending, but the story never ends. Exactly. Mundo. I guess this is the best way we can wrap it up there. And speaking of wrapping up folks, I just want to give you our convention information. Just look over the event page of the legend, of the traveling TARDIS. Megacon has finally moved. It is uh, the weekend of Halloween starting October 30th. Um, and we are still scheduled to go over there. We're still at Florida Supercon July 4th weekend. No, Florida Supercon, I apologize, has canceled. And it's moving to 20, 2021. So the next I one that's... Coming, it's 2021. It's 20, the, this Megacon Light that's uh, Halloween weekend. Right, and it's Megacon Light. Megacon will return in March of 2021 for full-blown. But right now, yeah, get your tickets if you want to go to Megacon. And hopefully we will be there Hall Halloween weekend. The next convention coming up is Kaiser Supercon. Fingers crossed that's taking place literally as we're recording one month from now, June 12th. Of course, we're still going to Tampa Bay Comic Con. They haven't changed. Uh, they're still on July uh, July 10th weekend and October 10th, Comcast Gerberus that weekend as well. Thank you, folks, for joining us. For those of you who <clears throat> chat with us, thank you so much. Thank you, Melanie, Dr. Freedom, James, and check out uh, James Ensel's geek to me Radio. You can follow him on his uh, Facebook page as well as his Twitter page and Earth Station Who with Mike Faber. How often do you guys put out content? Just real quick. Um, when the show's not running... Basically every two weeks we put out, 
we just put out our invisible enemy episode that mm-hmm. and it should be out everywhere you can find podcasts and we are doing this next episode we are doing the diary of river song volume four where she Ooh. meets the fourth doctor <sighs> yeah I I, I I i i'm not making enough money to buy this stuff right now in the current conditions otherwise i go completely broke we'll wrap this up with one last chat uh sean woodley mcdonald sadie's a really lovely person and so like her uh like her mom in looks and vocally too i'm so glad she's decided to take on her mom's role such an awesome thing to do. I think so too. Folks, thank you for joining us. Please continue to stay logged on, tuned in, stay safe. And believe it or not, Florida is opening up like crazy. So don't have to stay at home, but definitely please stay safe and continue to become part of the legend. Peace.